Welcome back to Lesson 19. We're in the middle of making a custom action menu for our brand new character. Join me. Back. I'm going to put the motion clip back. And then I'm going to go up to this awkwardness clip and I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to say FFD intensity. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it down to about 15, 16%, okay? Now, I'm gonna delete this one again and show you how, see how much smaller it, it, it's doing that? So we still have motion going on there, but it's not quite as exaggerated. All right, now we'll put the, the actual motion clip in. And now these, all the hand motions that are going along with it. All right, so let's say we want him to stop. Okay, so let's find a good stopping place. Say he comes up like this, just before he moves his hand off his chin. break the clip right there. Right click on it and I break that clip and I go ahead and I slide it down the timeline say to where it ends at 200. Now what I've done is I've created him stopping right there. He still blinks and he still moves because of the freeform deformation but he doesn't continue his moving until there. See how we did that? So I've created a whole different set of movements and eye movements and blinking and all of that in one clip 200 frame movie. So let's set our stop now, a new stop to 200. And this is what we've got is a 200 frame movie. Okay. So now I'm going to click on collect clip and I'm going to click once right at the beginning frame. And I've got a little double arrow down here. Grab this one thing and slide it on over. And now I have this whole thing selected and I'm going to be lined up on collect clip and I'm going to right click and say add to the action menu. Okay, And this is going to be uh, action one or you can name it something meaningful so that you know and can remember. All right. So now I'm going to go here just a tiny skosh in the timeline. I'm going to move that stop back out so it doesn't mess with us when we add this clip back in. Now I'm going to come up on this actor and I'm going to right click on him. And you're going to see that we have his standard default pose stand that was already in there when it came with the character. And there's our new action one. I'm going to click on it. And uh, now it's loaded in a whole new clip. All right, now we have a 400 frame movie. I'll hit the stop. And let's go back to the beginning here and uh, let's play it. All right. So that's how flexible and easy it is to add a, a motion clip then uh, anytime. So the only thing is you always have to remember to take these characters back into composer mode where you're going to come up here now and say file, save character. And I'm going to go right back over the top of John. Now I could make separate copies depending on what I'm doing with them. But in this case, I'm just replacing it and I'm creating a completely uh, different character and that has action motions now. All right, so now let's go back to the stage. And we have our 200 frame movie here because I went ahead and took out that other part. And we're gonna go ahead and 
give ourselves just a little more space. And we're going to come to content now and to custom. And successfully imported my one item into the default folder. So let's go ahead and click back on actors again. And we're looking for John. So first off, we've got kind of a crummy looking thumbnail. So it is a little bit of a process here. Let's uh, just scooch him like that. This, and then we'll go to content now, and we're going to just capture this thumbnail. Okay, great. So now we have a thumbnail of John 1. And I'm going to just scooch him back over now that we're done with that and doing that. We'll put him on over here, and then we're going to unhighlight him so it doesn't replace him. And I'm going to bring John to, I'm going to bring this other John in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just resize him. And say, I don't want this one to have the hat. I took the hat off by deleting it. I'm going to come in here now, and I'm already at the beginning of the timeline. And because I have him highlighted, I'm right clicking him. And there's that action that we put in. It's already built into this actor now. And I add that. To the timeline and just like that Joshua has so this is Joshua zero and this is Joshua F and so here's his clip that we just added in and he does exactly the same thing as the other one all right, so that's a pretty cool trick and how you can add that to your brand new character. Um, so we've gone through a bunch of stuff here, and let's see if there's any other details. Um, okay, so we did talk about their names, and it was a real illusion, uh, Joshua, when we started, and now we've created a John. So. We can go ahead in here, and he will be John, and then we'll come here, double click him, John 1, and so whatever I name him, I can just go ahead while I'm working in the movie and make that happen. So here's just a quick look at uh, the transformation from the real illusion character to our own. We're going to do a few more changes on our John character here. Let's do the 360 head creator and we'll customize him just a little more. And you'll find that tool in composer mode. Okay, so we've got the 360 head creator open. And when I put it on preview mode here, I can just drag the mouse around and kind of see the location of his mouth from all the different angles that you could turn his head into. So now what we're going to do is put it on the deform track here. And whatever part we have selected is what we can work on. And so I'm just going to adjust the eyes just a little bit here just to make them a little wider. And then this is, now you'll notice that the we're in the center with the red dot there. And so we're looking at a straight on view. And so we can just adjust this mouth and tweak it to where we get it just where we want it. And then we'll go around the whole entire board and move his face and keep tweaking that web until we have the mouth movement looking correct in every single position. Let's see how far off it is there. And so it takes a bit of tweaking. We'll go ahead and do a couple here slow, but then we're going to just high speed and you can see how I just keep moving around from position to position until I have all the face positions where I want it. 
Now this was an existing mouth off of an existing uh, character that comes with the cartoon animator. And so we're customizing this mouth and giving him a bit of a smile in all of his movements as well. And now he has his own custom mouth features. And the eyes are a little different too. Cool. Okay, so he's ready to go. I've saved him, and now I'm just bringing him over the top of the first John here, and I've called him John 2, and you can see that he's got it in his action menu. Comes complete with an action menu here, and here's a preview of him. He's looking good. I've gotten quite a few questions about where do I source content, like scenes and characters, props, and that type of thing. So I thought I'd just spend a minute and show you where I do source my stuff. So Eleven Labs does my voice creations. I speak every voice, and then it creates it into the character's voice. And Cartoon Animator 5, of course, for animation. and this is my resource for their manual on that. I uh, use uh, the Krita for any type of uh, Photoshop type editing that needs to be done. Marketplace is where I go for all of my characters and uh, scenes for the most part and lots and lots of free items there. There's a lot of creators that highly discount their characters and then they have other work that's just wonderful. So this is a great place to get your stuff. And Pixabay, I lean on by searching vectors. I usually don't go to all images. I come down here and hit vectors. And then you can kind of see when I'm looking for some type of prop for what I'm working on, then, then this is where I've gone. And VectEasy is also another resource for backgrounds and things like that. I found a few things here. You, you just have to give credit in your descriptions and that when you use these, these types of free things. It's nice to give credit to them anyway. I organize for the lessons and just basically keep track of things as I go. I like to have a place where everything I can reference in one spot and so this is a great way and then there's the master the cartoon animator camera system and just you know keeping some different notes and research and stuff like that and then um, types of camera shots and film and by scattering these types of shots into your work you can really create some cool stuff how I organize uh, the characters for the show. I'll have my actor and their voices, the Eleven Labs voice, and whatever settings that I decided to go with. This is how I keep it straight. So when I first started animating with Cartoon Animator, they had some keyboard shortcuts that were online. So I organized it into an Excel document. If you're interested in having a copy of this, I've gone ahead and and put it on our new website, HoundDogNews.online. You can come here to learn animation, and here you can see that I have that my friend referral link in here for trying the cartoon animator. Um, and then also, you can just hit this here, download a free keyboard shortcuts, and boom, you see that sent it up. So it's just a PDF file, and there it is. Okay. So if you'd find that useful, feel free to just go grab yourself a copy, HoundDogNews.online. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. And if you're enjoying these videos, please be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel a lot. Thanks so much for watching.